All right, guys, welcome back to Alaskan Savage. And uh, I run j, &J Charters, Guide and Outfitters out of Kaufman Cove, Alaska, and Southeast Alaska. And I'm getting a lot of calls on what to bring for tackle on new guys coming to Southeast and coming to our area. So I'm going to go over a little bit of tackle. And this will help out whoever's coming to Southeast, and it also help out my clients on uh, what to bring for their gear. I'm going to start out with the rods. I got two halibut rods I use a lot. One is a jigging stick made by Ugly Stick. And it's a tiger rod. And it's a 50 to 100 pound line class. It's got a 100 pound braid on it with a squall 50 reel and made by pin. It's a good combination, great for jigging ling cod and rockfish. Uh, it'll it'll handle a halibut no problem up to 200 plus pounds. I mean it's it it's a good stiff tough rod, but it's got a lot of sensitivity. It's a lot lighter than the llama glasses, but uh, it it'll handle anything you can tie on out here. The llama glasses are a little higher in price, um, but I've had some of these rods. This rod's been with me since I started in. 1999 and some of these rods are looking a little tough but they are still catching fish and i'm not putting them away until they're done i got the shimano or the shimano dakota 700 line counter the line counters are nice you don't have to have them but they're they are nice i mean you know how far out of line you're getting um you know when the fish is getting closer uh they are nice but it's uh, got a different color or power pro 100 pound on it and it's got a little more drag you can get about 24 pounds of drag on these versus 18 pounds on the pins so these are my halibut rods the salmon rods i run ugly sticks and llama glass <laughs> The llama glass it's uh, 15 to 30 pound this is the XCC 934 and this glass rod will mooch it all downrigger um, I use them for jigging herring catching the smaller rockfish the salmon the line counter is really nice on the salmon rods because I do a lot of uh, herring jigging I jig a lot of my own fresh bait and I can find the bait on the fish finder, hook up a sabiki rig and drop down to them and get a bucket of herring in a hurry. I don't have to guess where they're at. I can drop right down on them. Uh, really, really useful. When you're mooching, uh, it's pretty nice too. You can spot the fish down there. You can drop right down with a cup plug herring and a, a mooching rig. and it's it's really effective knowing where you're at this is a shimano 500 series with line counter i'm running an ugly stick elite and this is like uh this is a nine foot three eighths to three quarter ounce lure um i've got 40 pound tests both uh main line on both of these rods i run maximum either green or uh chameleon I can't say enough about the maximum line, the mono, it's just tougher than heck. The halibut rods, I'm running Power Pro, and it comes in a wide variety of colors, white, green, yellow. I like the more high vis on my charter boat so I can see everybody's lines, but it doesn't really matter what you're using. But another, another uh, braided line that I really like, that I have uh, good confidence in, is the Tough Line Plus. There's 
there's the there's the two different salmon rods, two different halibut rods I use. Um, as you can see over here, there's just a wide variety of colors of flashers. Um, I run mostly hotspot flashers, uh, all 11 inch. I don't run any Dodgers, and the fl difference between a Dodger is it's flat and it goes this way. It dodges. A flasher, it rotates all the way and to make sure these are working efficiently you should see your rod bouncing and it's pulsing that means you know that it's rotating over and you know you're going the right speed and with that rotating it not only flashes and brings the fish in it also makes your lure your spoon your fly whatever your your hoochie whatever behind that flasher it gives it motion and I run all my leaders at least 60 pound tests. I don't go anything light. Uh, 60 and 80 is pretty much what I run. And so if you were hooking to this with a downrigger rod, you would not have any leader in front of this. You would just hook directly from your rod to the flasher on the small end. The small end goes towards your rod. So with that said, that would be on a downrigger. If you're not running a downrigger, you're going to run a weighted rig. And my favorite way to run a weighted rig is on a three-way swivel. So if you can see that, this would go to your main line. This goes to your sinker, and it has a corkscrew swivel, which you can change the weights really quick and easy. So you just get it, spin it off. You want to go lighter, put a four-ouncer on there. This is a 10. If I want to go heavier, I could put a 16 or a 12 and get a little deeper. But it's really fast, really easy to get down. And the great thing about it is as soon as you land this fish, you just throw it right back in the water, get your line back out there, and it's in. With a downrigger, you got to clip it on. Uh, it's just a little more work. These stay in the water fast. So I'm running a 28-inch leader, 60-pound test line, 6 aught. Mustad stainless steel uh, octopus style hooks and I also run these are bait rigs this is on a 32 inch leader when I run a bait I run a little longer and it's on a hood and you put your herring in there I use uh, copper wire they come a lot of them come with pre-rigged either toothpicks or little pegs you can use and crimp it on there the top hook goes into the herring like so and you put a little bend in it and I'll do that later on another video but these if you've used these they work great especially for king salmon early season so the flashers are out of the way there is so many wide varieties of hoochies this one I just threaded it up but you just run it down you run the mylar skirt down first and then the hoochie Tuck the mylar scoot up inside, the skirt up inside the hoochie. And if you see, you can see that back hook barely extends past the mylar skirt. You don't want it sticking way back here. The fish will hit it premature and you'll, you'll get them snagged the side of the head. And you don't want that. You want both those hooks in their mouth. So that's how you rig that one. Bring it out 28 to 32 inches. Tie a loop knot in it. Tie it to your flasher. There's so many different colors and varieties of these hoochies. Um, you can buy out a tackle shop and you might not have the right one. You might have it. I mean, there's, there's flies. This is a Grand Slam fly. Works great. Comes in blue and green, sometimes purple. Um, there's just a wide variety. You got these silver hookers. Um, they're great flies. There's just a wide variety. I mean, mostly it's just color um, and some flash. But on the spoons, I really like these coho killers. Uh, they come in a wide variety. Um, the coyote spoons are another one of my favorites. I mostly run fives, but the sixes is what I got handy on my boat right now, so I just grabbed them for this short little video. But they come in a wide variety. They work great. You can pull them behind a flasher. You can pull them on their own. This Brad's bait, this super bait, it's a cut plug imitation. You can load up bait inside of it. 
rig it with a leader and it works great it uh, has smell um, they come in a right wide variety it's not something i would pull behind a flasher though because it takes the action out of the flasher you want that flasher rolling so i think that is all oh you know you got your banana sinkers you can also mooch uh, in our area we do a lot more trolling uh, the, the fish are a little more spread out and we cover a little more ground pulling the flashers and the hardware but mooching is still an efficient way if you know how to mooch um, and you feel comfortable with it that is uh, that's a good good source of uh, getting limits of fish going on to the halibut gear this is probably my go-to bait rigging for halibut this is called the spreader bar I'm running a 32 ounce sinker here with a 300 pound uh, leader with a little glow in the dark. I use different glow in the darks. So I always, when you're fishing deep, you wanna give them something to aim at. So I've got different methods. This is glow in the dark pink made by B2 Squid. It's a good one, but you'll bait this rig. These are eight and nine aught uh, Gamagatsu, or I'm sorry, not Gamagatsu, but stainless uh, mustads. And I tie these leaders myself. I crimp the back one, snell the top one. And another thing about these rigs is you want them bouncing the bottom, but you want to be able to pick them up so your bait's not dragging in the rocks. You want this to be out here to where the fish can see it. By bouncing this, you call the fish to your bait. It's like a dinner bell. They'll come over and investigate. You also know the depth. So you want to be, if you're way up here, you're not going to get any bites. If you're down here where the fish are and you're banging it, you don't want to drag because you're going to snag. But every once in a while, you want to pump that bottom and pick it up and get your bait fluttering. And it's a really productive way. There's lots of different rigs. You got the double hook set up like so. Um, this one, you have to be a little more patient, let the fish eat it. But once you get them hooked, they don't come off. It's the circle hook. And I run it a lot on women and kids. Um, that haven't had a lot of fish or anybody that doesn't have a lot of fishing experience. You can just put this in the pole holder, let the fish hammer it, and they will hook themselves. I like the jig fish. It's a little it's a little more sporty. There's several jigs out there, but these are jigs that I like to use. One is the Kodiak Custom. It's a really good jig on ling cod, Pacific cod, and halibut. Uh, I like to, this is one I haven't rigged yet, but I like on all my jigs, I like to put a chew leader. If you get a 200 pound halibut and he smacks this little jig, a lot of the times his teeth are all the way up here. And I crimp these short little sections of 300 pound mono on here, and it's just a chew leader. Here's another jig made by Delta, Gibbs and Delta Tackle. And I really like it. It's got a glow in the dark UV skirt on. They come in different varieties of skirts. You can rig you can rig any jig head up like this. Like I said, the chew leader. Uh, I like this one because it has a triple hook stinger. Not many how to get away with that. Um, this is kind of a luxury thing for guys that want to do how the fishing. A lot of guys get bruised and they don't like um putting that rod right buried in their hip so if you want you can bring yourself a uh pole holder just velcros around your waist put your pole in there and then your rod butt doesn't chew you up and bruise you you get big halibut on you're going to know it and you're going to feel it later on another thing that i really recommend when you come to our area is rain gear we get roughly close to 200 inches of rain a year um, these are one brands that I really like. I really like Kelly Hansen and I wear a lot of Grunion gear and uh, you know there's a lot of light Gore-Tex stuff out there and in a downpour um, most of them don't hold up. I mean they'll hold up for a little bit but you cannot beat rubber rain gear. It's a hundred percent unless you tear a hole in it. You're gonna stay warm, it's gonna keep the wind off you, and you're gonna stay dry. Another thing I really recommend that a lot of people um, come up here with, and they come up here with uh, hard soled black rubber boots. And they get on my boat, they get out at the dock, and they're sliding all over the place, or they wanna go out to the river and walk around. 
everything's wet, everything's slimy in our country. And the reason why I like these boots the best is because of these soles. There is not a better gripping sole for wet, slimy surfaces. And these extra tough boots get the job done. They're comfortable. They sweat a little bit. Your feet don't breathe. But uh, for wet walking, I've had a lot of people fall and slip on the dock. Uh, the black sole boots are just deadly. And I can't say enough about the soles on these extra toughs. And I think they're starting to be made back in the U.S. now, so that's even better because when China was making them, they were garbage. But uh, falling apart wouldn't even make it a month. Anyways, guys, if you like these videos, please um, subscribe. Please hit the like button. Share them with friends. Give me a comment. Let me know uh, if there's something I missed. But uh, this video is to help everybody get to Alaska and be productive and know where your meat comes from and whack them and stack them. Hope to see you soon.